This is the iron carbon phase diagram representing the equilibrium between alpha, which is body-centered cubic ferrite, and gamma, which is face-centered cubic austenite. The thing that I would like you to notice on this diagram is that this boundary here, which represents the solubility of carbon in ferrite that is in contact with austenite, has a retrograde shape, which means that the maximum solubility of carbon in body-centered cubic ferrite is of the order of 0.02 weight percent at the temperature of 600 degrees centigrade. Now imagine that instead of body-centered cubic ferrite, we have tetragonal ferrite. That means the C-axis is different from the other two axes in, in the unit cell. Then how would this phase diagram change? Well, we can do these calculations using first principles methods. And a remarkable discovery is that the phase boundary for tetragonal ferrite is totally different from that for cubic ferrite. And we have a much greater solubility of carbon in tetragonal ferrite, which is in contact with austenite, than body-centered cubic ferrite. This value is as high as 0.4 weight percent depending on, of course, the level of tetragonality. Now, why is this important? Well, since 1981, we've had a lot of results, direct observations of atoms, that bainitic ferrite has a carbon concentration in it, which is well in excess of the value given by the ordinary iron carbon phase diagram. And what is even more surprising is that the carbon remains within the bainitic ferrite even though it is in contact with austenite where the carbon would rather be. Okay. Now, of course, if the solubility, if the bainitic ferrite is tetragonal and the solubility is much greater than what we imagined it to be, then the results are completely consistent. In other words, the carbon will remain in the bainitic ferrite, which has a tetragonality, and will be reluctant to partition into the austenite. Now, many amazing modern experiments uh, have confirmed that carbon is actually in solution in the bainitic ferrite at concentrations much greater than given by the ordinary phase diagram and will not partition into the austenite in spite of prolonged heat treatment. So the hypothesis of this paper basically is that the explanation for excess carbon remaining inside bainitic ferrite is that the bainitic ferrite forms by a displacive transformation mechanism in which it inherits the carbon concentration of the parent phase. That gives a certain level of tetragonality inside the bainitic ferrite, which means that the solubility of carbon is increased remarkably. Okay. Thank you.